And you know what? Forgot to start recording. So um, we have Pam coming up. So that's the most important part. Um, DAS has new money, um, new apprenticeship innovation funding. And I have both the slide deck and the um, information on this new funding from DAS at this link. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop with my announcements. Again, um, we have Pam Knapp from the San Joaquin County Education, and she will be presenting. And Pam, I'm going to stop sharing, and you can share. And um, as soon as this is my last slide here, you can take it away in one minute. Um, we had six CAI applications um, um, submitted from our region that we know of. Um, and they were either college or K-12 entities, and two of the six were fairly large collaboratives with multi-college or multi-school participants. And then um, John Dunn, who is the general apprenticeship coordinator, and I met with 22 different sub-regional, um, regional or individual <laughs> colleges, K-12s, community groups, um, about um, developing pathways in this sector between October, November, and December. So lots of interest, lots of um, questions, and I imagine that we're going to hopefully have some of these programs funded um, and will continue to grow. Feel free to email myself or John if you'd like to meet. We're still happy to meet with individuals or collaboratives around developing a program. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing and would like to um, welcome Pam Knapp and Pam, feel free to share. And for all of you, introduce yourself in the chat and add your questions and I'll ask them of Pam when we're done. Very good, thanks Kathleen, I appreciate that. I am going to bore most of you because I have seen you before and you have seen this presentation, but I've tried to change it up. So I will start with saying, sorry if you've already seen this. Um, I think that what's so exciting is we've been in this realm together now for about three and a half years trying to define what's going on for me with youth and specifically high school apprenticeship programs. And uh, we started over here in San Joaquin County Office of Education, ARCH, Apprenticeships Reaching Career Horizons, and we have... Um, 13, we have registered 13 high school students with the Division of Apprenticeship Standards while still in high school and they're being paid and they're taking community college classes. So you're gonna hear in my voice how enthusiastic and excited I am about this because I will continue to say this is the highest form of work-based learning. I am in a, I have from a 35 year background working at a private college, Humphreys College in Stockton, then went over to San Joaquin Delta College and spent four years, then 20 years at Linden High School as the CTE director and college career counselor. And here for almost, it'll be four years in July. So this is a great culmination to my career um, where I have really dedicated my life to helping high school students find life after high school. And the opportunity that I see in apprenticeships is so exciting and rewarding that um, I'm just thrilled to share what many of you may have already seen. So I'm just going to apologize again. So I will attempt to share my screen now and hope that I'm getting to the right um, PowerPoint here. And is that what you are seeing? Um, but I need to go from slideshow, um, play from beginning. So are you seeing my screen? Yep. Good. Deal. Fine. Okay. So that's me. Um, my name, um, I like to start with Mickey Mouse because when I'm speaking mostly to high school and community college counselors, I think they can appreciate this and, uh, understand that Mickey Mouse was an apprentice. He was the sorcerer's apprentice, but we also know that he was not paid incremental pay increases, nor was he probably taking related supplemental instruction, but he's still called an apprentice. And I start with this because in my journey over the past three and a half years, I like to joke with people and say, when I started here, I could pretty much only spell the word apprentice. Um, 
there is such a misunderstanding about what an apprentice is, how to register an apprentice. Is it the same thing as an internship? So I have dedicated literally the last three years of my career trying to get out to high schools in our region and statewide to share that there is so much that can be done within the CTE realm and how this is the highest form of work-based learning and no, it is not the same as an internship. And let's all get on the same page sharing what an actual apprenticeship is. So most people recognize that Mickey Mouse was the sorcerer's apprentice. But like I said, many high school counselors and CTE college counselors don't really understand the difference. And they think that an internship is the same as an apprenticeship. So how did ARCH begin here at the County Office of Education? So I kind of go into this right now, and it started with a CAI grant, just like Kathleen was chatting about. Um, that's been a fun ride in itself. Um, we have applied, I just applied in December for our fourth CAI grant, and the rules have changed each time. So that's a lot of fun. It's like we're in the third inning, and now there's four outs instead of three in the game of baseball. So um who knows? Uh, I appreciate Sean McCobb and his work um, in that department, but it's been a, a fun ride. So the reason we started the high school apprenticeship program was when I first started, I went to a meeting at our local workforce investment board where they were discussing how to start a high school apprenticeship program. I thought that this was something that was going on throughout the state. I was mortified attending this meeting thinking, how in the heck could I have just spent the last 20 years of my career working as a college counselor and not know that there's such a thing as a high school apprenticeship program? So two weeks after that, my um, superintendent asked uh, me to apply for the CAI grant. Only thing I knew at the time being one and a half months into my new job was high school. So I said, all right, we'll do a consortium of a CAI grant to start high school apprenticeship programs. We had eight high school uh, eight high school districts join. Um, we got the grant and um, quickly learned that there were no high school apprenticeship programs in the state of California, and that this was something that we had to create from the ground up. So I like to say that this um, plane is flying with half a wing and part of a pilot because we are learning every single day about how to move this needle forward for both the state and the nation. Um, it's been a great ride and it's all part of how do we address the 500,000 apprentices that our governor is hoping to get to by the year 2029. And so my mantra is tomorrow's workforce is in the classroom today. We have got to tap into our youth. The gray tsunami is real and people are retiring at huge rates and we've got to find ways for our youth to participate in real skill obtainment coupled with community college classes. And that's why I'm loving this apprenticeship opportunity. So there's training models, there's the pre-apprenticeship and then there's apprenticeships. We hear them as youth apprenticeship and high school apprenticeships. I'm not a huge fan of pre-apprenticeships as they relate to high school, because in my humble opinion, after hanging out at the high school level and serving as a CTE director, a pre-apprenticeship is essentially the CTE capstone, capstone course within a high school CTE pathway program, which is great. Capstone classes, CTE classes, super important. But with this pre-apprenticeship model at the high school level, there's no skin in the game. Students are not required to actually do any on-the-job training. They can, but it is not a requirement if you register your CTE capstone course with the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. The main requirement is that the registration process shows that there is an MOU or an agreement in place with an actual apprenticeship program. So I like to use the example of a firefighting program at a high school level. If that, that capstone class registers through a formal MOU with an apprenticeship program like Cal Fire, stating that they will advise that pre-apprenticeship program, then those students who complete the program will receive a certificate from the DAS that they are a registered pre-apprentice. 
but it doesn't give them a guarantee into the apprenticeship occupation or into that occupation. It does give them a leg up when they apply for that apprenticeship. So that's good. So I guess I shouldn't start by saying I'm not a fan. I don't love it because it muddies the waters. If we can do an actual registered apprenticeship program for our high school students, whereby they can take free classes and whereby they can get paid, why don't we do that? So that's what I like to say. Why don't we just go for it, deal with all the paperwork and get them registered so that they can get actual on the job training? Because honestly, that's what our high school students need. I'm sick and tired of adults and companies saying, you know, these kids don't have any soft skills and they're just not teaching that in the high schools any longer. Well, honestly, where do we really learn it? We learn it if we're doing it. And we can read about soft skills and we can fill out notebooks or workbooks about soft skills and we can see it in videos. But until we're actually in that situation, we all know that we can't truly understand it. So that's my mantra about pre-apprenticeships. The training model is it could be anywhere from two to 16 weeks, CTE capstone course, and it's designed as an introduction and it's unpaid because um, that's how this model is set up and the students are learning in their CTE capstone course. You all probably already understand what the apprenticeship model is. That's um, where students enter into a new role and it ends when they have obtained all of their on the job training hours and their related supplemental instruction hours. For our programs, um, because they're in the non skilled trades, they are requiring a 2000 hour on the job training minimum and 144 related supplemental instruction units. You probably know this already, but I think it's 50, a three unit class converts to 52.5 hours of RSI training at a community college. So, and I'll share that a little bit more in the future. So the apprenticeship model can be time or competency-based. The program that we're doing is a little bit of both. It's a hybrid of both. Because when we started, we said, oh, our students will get through in three years. Well, <laughs> we were in the middle of COVID. Um, so there was no admission onto campuses. Uh, you should also know that all of our employers, as we speak, are school districts. I have been trying my darndest to break into the private sector, but as we speak today, nobody's willing to take a risk on a teenager. But I am grateful to the school districts who are on board. We started with three, uh, Linden Unified, Ripon Unified, and our own County Office of Education. I am happy to say that uh, we now have Escalon, who has hired an apprentice, and Lincoln Unified has the job posting out there and Tracy Unified has cracked the nut with the unions. So I will talk about that in one second. So um, as you know, there has to be an incremental wage increase. There has to be an apprenticeship committee. We have the San Joaquin County High School Apprenticeship Committee. There are instructional courses, there's journey to apprentice ratio, and then there's the selection procedure. I wrote this slide prior to the Division of Apprenticeship Standards starting a new committee, which convened on February 6th for the first time. And I'm guessing some of you in this audience may be on that committee. They convened the California Youth Apprenticeship Advisory Committee. And there are 19 of us who've been appointed to this committee to help lead and guide the state on defining what the heck it is we're doing because WIOA defines a youth apprentice as anybody between the ages of 16 and 24. For me, I speak high school. That's what my background is. And so high school, I think, could definitely start as a junior at age 16. And there's a lot that goes into what has to take place for a 16-year-old to go to work. We know there needs to be work permits. We know that parent signature has to be, parent or guardian signature has to be on those work permits. There has to be an advisor at the high school who oversees these students who are working. So there is a definite distinction between an in-school high school student and what WIOA defines as a youth apprentice. And so I'm happy to say that over the next couple of years, we hopefully sooner than that, my gosh, um, we will soon have a better definition of what is a youth apprentice. 
both in California and nationwide, because in my humble opinion, I feel that there is a huge difference between a 16 year old and a 24 year old. And I think we're doing both sets a disservice, lumping them under one umbrella. Now, I don't disagree that sadly, many 16 year olds must take on the role of a 24 year old. Many 16 year olds have to, or, or are the main breadwinner, childcare provider, all of these things within their household. But developmentally and intellectually and socially, a 16-year-old is vastly different than a 24-year-old. And so I think if we as a state can determine how we can serve both groups of students, then we're going to be coming out on top and, and figuring this out together. Okay, so currently we have two occupations in San Joaquin County that are approved by the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. And a third is sadly sitting there. I don't know if anybody on there is from DAS or has any pool. I have been trying to bribe, send chocolate. Nothing is happening, but I need this third set of standards approved um, for assistant farm manager. We're in the heart of ag land here. Many of our high schools teach agriculture and are proud to do so. Many of our high schools have farms. They have already students on their high school campuses who are being paid to oversee these farms during the breaks and over the summers. All we need to do is make them an apprentice. And I have three high schools who have signed on already who are paying their students and whose students are taking the classes at Delta College. I just need to make them official apprentices. So um, first we started with information technology support specialist, which I'll speak about in a minute. And the second one was teacher's aid paraprofessional. So here you will see all of the RSI courses at San Joaquin Delta College for the teach, uh, for the IT specialist. This was started due to the amazing superintendent in Ripon Unified, Ziggy Roberson, who said, we have got to grow our own. We do not have enough people working in our small school district's IT department. How can we use our own students, grow our own talent, and put them to work? So this came about where I brought all of the IT directors from our school districts who are participating, outside IT folks, Delta College, a division of uh, my guy at DAS, Charles Richards, and um, we all met in February of 2020 to discuss what the courses were at Delta College and what their work processes could look like. And this is what that committee came up with. These are the actual courses. So we all sat around a room for five hours looking at course descriptions and how they could relate to what the actual job was going to be that they needed to do. So everybody turned in their stuff. I refined it. I worked with our own consultants here at the um, County Office of Education who have written standards for years. Thank God for those two. And our consultant, Charles Richards, and we submitted standards. We put together all the work processes along with these courses. And um, I'm so proud of this program because we are about to, in June, graduate our first two high school apprentices who have actually been on this journey, helping us build this plane. These are the students who were juniors during COVID. These are the students who were not able to be on campus, but their campuses allowed them on as employees. This is during a time when there was the one-to-one -one device rollout in the middle of COVID, when thank goodness for these apprentices at these small school districts who were helping to open and upgrade and roll out Chromebooks, iPads, MacBooks to all of the students for remote distance learning. So um, you may, we started with six apprentices, two in Ripon, two in Linden, and two here at the County Office of Education. You may be asking yourself, well, what's happened to the others? Well, it's been an interesting ride. Um, a couple of the students, sadly, were not able to hang with the community college course load and they weren't able to pass classes. And that's been a big aha moment for me. 
So for high schools, they need to have better wraparound services. We need to have somebody who is actually overseeing those students. And I spoke to a group of 25 this morning, high school counselors, in fact. And by overseeing, I don't mean saying, hey, Sally, how's your class going? And Sally saying back, it's going great, Mrs. Knapp. But more sitting down with Sally and saying, show me your class grades right now from your community college coursework. Because I did that when I was a counselor at a high school level. I ran dual enrollment programs for our students and I would ask students to sit down with me and actually show me, oh, look, you've got a 72% on this first quiz. How can we raise that score? You need intensive wraparound services with these high school students because many times this is the first opportunity that they're going to have to take a college level course and the fact that it's online. So those are the IT course classes. The next um, approved standards is in paraprofessional is what the actual occupation is, but we're calling it teacher's aid because many high school students don't have a clue what a paraprofessional is. This came about because when we came back to work face-to-face, -face, um, we were holding a curriculum director's meeting here at the County Office of Education. And one of the superintendents said, we are suffering from a good deal of learning loss within the grade school classes. And is there any way that we could take our high school students and hire them as apprentices to go into the elementary school classrooms and to go after school and to help with this learning loss? And I said, bring it, let's go. So we wrote the standards, much like we did for IT. We provided all of the course outlines for the paraprofessional um, program. We asked the high schools to and the elementary schools to write down what the work processes would be. What are these students actually going to be doing in the classroom? And we came up with this. And I assure you, our students are not gluing, taping, stapling, or running errands. They are actually working with students in small groups on one-on-one -on -one projects out at the PE time working with students. And so this list of classes that you see is actually to prepare students to take the paraprofessional exam. So you can see there's more classes involved in this. So the timing for a high school apprentice to get through is actually taking a little longer than three years, but it doesn't have to um, if the student can take classes over the summer, which we encourage them to do. So steps for starting a high school apprenticeship program like ARCH, as you know, you have to have the employer because all apprenticeships start with the employer first. They come to you with an occupation. So recently I met with our Stockton Chamber of Commerce and they made the mistake of saying, so how can we help? Well, you can hire a high school apprentice, is what I said to them. And so we're now starting to develop a marketing sales apprenticeship program. Because really, you only need one employer and one apprentice, and there's a program. We here at the County Office of Education serve as an intermediary, where we handle all of the fun paperwork. We help write the standards. We submit the standards. We oversee the high school apprenticeship committee. We work as a liaison between the high schools and the employer and the Division of Apprenticeship Standards. We collect all the OJT hours. We collect all of the community college coursework because our program requires that students earn a B or better in their community college classes. What happens if they earn a C? Well, we learned that because you can't retake a C in a community college. And so the committee had to come back together and revamp our rules and regulations and say that they would need to take a different class. They have to maintain a 3.0 or above in their community college classes. And that's one reason our, sadly, some of our students who are great on the job training, they're not able to move up that pay scale because they are lower on their um, RSI GPA requirement. So back to this slide that I never really stick to. The next is labor market demands. Obviously, we here in our, our area probably wouldn't put together something that wasn't relatable to our labor market. Local leadership and support, steering committee, program subcommittees, I've just I've explained that. Um, then we write the standards and then we implement it. Labor market identification, I'm not gonna bore you with all of this. I love the fact 
that Kathleen had on there, the Centers of Excellence, the Labor Market for Education, Centers of Excellence, and Nora Sarnella is a great group of folks to work with to provide this type of information. Honestly, though, I don't stick to this. Well, I do. I'm not going to just willy nilly go out and write standards for something that I think would be a fun, like cake decorating apprenticeship program. Not that that's not a good one, but until an employer comes to me and says, this is the occupation. Um, and even if that occupation doesn't have high labor market demands, I think we can still make a an argument because the employer really needs that in their own organization. So um, yes, industry uh, labor market is important, but I'm not going to turn away somebody who says, can we start an apprenticeship as a legal assistant for my law office? Sure, let's work on that together. Um, look at the labor market and the education resources. We partner with San Joaquin Delta College. And um, for instance, this attorney with whom I'm working started out saying that he would like to hire a paralegal. After I looked at the paralegal courses at Delta College, I determined those were pretty high level for a high school junior. And so going back to that employer, I discussed this and said, is there another occupation that you would be willing to help train so you could get the help you need, but also introduce students to the legal profession? So we're working on that right now because we don't want to set our students up for anything but success. Need to find your local leaders and make sure that they support you. Um, the mayor of Stockton, Kevin Lincoln, runs from me now when he sees me because I keep saying to him, wouldn't it be great if you, Mayor Lincoln, hired an apprentice in your office at age 16 from Stockton Unified in our most vulnerable population of students and modeled to the rest of the community how wonderful this opportunity could be? And that's pretty much how I speak to everybody um, who I discussed this with, because we need to give our teens a chance. We need to give them this opportunity to earn and learn. Not free. I did a recent lunch and learn um, with our local workforce investment board. And there was a gentleman in the audience who kept saying, well, I remember back in my day, I used to do internships and I worked for free. What happened to that? And I'm like, we need to pay our high school teens and they need to be paid with incremental increases. It's what's right. It's what we need to do, giving them this opportunity to earn and learn. Put together the steering committee. I can get into this in depth, but you do need to have your employers driving this steering committee. Define what the standards are. Again, you write what those are based upon what the occupation is, what the work processes are, what the courses are at the community college. In fact, we have articulated courses through the high school. So if the employer says, hey, this kid's already taken or this high school already offers this, can those be part of our standards? Well, sure, that's fine. As long as you know we can write those into the standards and then hopefully DAS would approve those. But any articulated courses with a community college, those are all acceptable. And we have written those into our current standards. And then we implement it. And that is what I've been doing for the last three years. I have been out promoting ARCH, trying to get employers on board, trying to figure out other trainings, um, opportunities, applying for more CAI grants and anything that I possibly can to share this, this journey with everybody in the state of California. And back to the 5,000 apprentices by 2029, um, we're getting there. And I'm super excited to see that the needle is moving um, between when I first started in 2019 and now all of the extra talk that's going on in the state of California. And I owe gratitude to a lot of you on this call. I know I saw Chanel's name. Um, she was super helpful and instrumental um, with when she was with the Foundation for the Community Colleges and the Apprenticeships, Grow Apprenticeships in California. Um, believe me, this has been a team effort. I have appreciated the opportunity to speak to many, many of you and to continue to learn from you because many of you say to me, well, why can't we do this? I mean, I had this question this morning. What happens to our high school students who go off to a four-year college and recognize, yeah, no, this isn't what I wanna do and come back. Can they join the high school apprenticeship program? currently know as our standards are written. 
but why not? Why? I mean, but what could we do or how could we help them going to the community college? So again, ours are directly related to juniors in high school. We've had seniors start as seniors because um, that's just how some of the high schools have run it. So what I've learned, um, God, be flexible, ask for help. <laughs> um, you might hear in my voice that I'm being bold because this is the right thing to do. Um, and tomorrow's workforce is in the classroom today. And that's what I've continued to say over and over and over again. So um, it's been a, a fun ride. And again, I've, I've really appreciated it. And I hope that we're able to um, move this forward within our state, especially in those high need occupations like education and early child care because those are two huge areas. And please know, I am cognizant of the fact that the skilled trades, especially in our area, do not want anybody under the age of 18. I am not out promoting CTE pathways in the skilled trades to start an apprenticeship program. I understand the MC3 training model that is out there. And so everything that I am speaking about and that we are promoting here in San Joaquin County is for the non-traditional apprenticeship careers, the new collar careers. Um, so I do have a really strong relationship with our local builders exchange and San Joaquin County um, and Calaveras construction unions. And I sit on a lot of their committees and just share what we're doing because they also want into the high schools. And we have many students who want to go into that pathway. And I am out there promoting about what is an apprenticeship for those of you who graduate. It's that other four-year degree. It's that opportunity for you to go get skills and college. Okay, so that's the presentation. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much. All right. um, I have some questions and hopefully we can have a, a bit of a discussion at this time. So um, just to clarify, obviously I marketed this as serving 16 to 18 year olds and teacher aid paraprofessionals, mostly what we would call an EDU pathway. Right. Although as everyone on this call knows with the P3 credential and with after school and the pathways really merge in many, they intersect in many places. So I have a couple of questions um, around um, 16 to 18 year olds primarily. How did you get districts to agree to hire them as full apprenticeship apprentices? Um, and did you require a different job classification for them or are they classified the same way as adults are? Um, or over 18s are, and what kinds of things are they doing? Uh, is it mostly tutoring? Are they, what are they actually doing in classrooms? Okay, so to how did we get the high schools to actually agree or the school districts to actually mm -hmm. agree? Um, because they couldn't fill the positions, number one. Okay. And they had advertised for paraprofessionals and they just needed the extra support in their classrooms. We started small, so if you have any small districts within your region, um, small districts are um, nicer to play with than the large districts with lots of different conflicting union opinions. The way they are doing it in the larger districts, so our small districts, they were able to get a letter from their teachers association stating that this is not in conflict with the paraprofessional occupation that is out there. Mm -hmm. They called it something different and it's a completely different job description. And they sold it in that these students are, these apprentices are going to be union employees once they turn 18. They are going to be paying into the union dues and we are hopefully growing people for the long term. For anybody in the K-12 system on this call, look around and, and kind of maybe do a survey. How many employees went to school in that district? It's not uncommon for students to come back and work for the district that they went to school in. And so again, it's back to growing our own. The fact that um, 
So what some larger districts are finding out is if they are able to write a job description that is clearly different than the job description that's out there that's under the unions, they're able to get away with it. And I know that Tracy is doing, Tracy Unified is working hard with some bargaining agreements and um, there's just umpteen different issues like who is the supervisor over the apprentice? Um, some unions are saying we want more money if we're going to now um, supervise somebody under the age of 18. Um, I, there's no one answer to this. There's no one size fits all. I think if you have a champion who is a superintendent and you have a good school board and you have a good relationship with your union reps, then you're able to make this work. But it goes back to, again, being bold. And what I say to people is if you're good enough to educate them, you should be good enough to hire them. <laughs> and we need to be able to hire our 16 year olds because what I said in the very beginning, how do our students get those skills? We have to mirror them and teach them to them. And a paycheck is important. Mm -hmm. The bigger part was getting the human resources involved because they're the ones who say, what? They get a pay increase? How? We don't get pay increases maybe once a year if we're lucky. COLA if we're lucky. Nope, they have to get an incremental pay increase. And so if you can get your HR teams on board uh, early, then that's going to help a lot. Pam, can I ask a quick question, though? The the pay scale, though, for the 16 to 18 year olds is lower than the 18 year olds, right? Correct. So what right. we do is we start off with the what is the entry level pay scale for a paraprofessional? Mm -hmm. And then we scaled that back down and we back did down. the same yeah. for yeah. IT. And so the minimum wage increase has kind of messed us up along the way mm -hmm. because they've kept that entry level wage for the adult positions the same, but we've stayed with minimum wage. So now they're going to be getting, and they get an, a $1 incremental pay increase as they earn and learn. So um, okay. yes, you're correct on that, Kathleen. Thank you. Uh, another cluster questions have to do with early childhood and, you know, there is an overlap. Um, now that districts are offering TK classrooms, for instance, are any of your under 18 year olds in transitional kindergarten courses, um, classrooms with four year olds is one set of questions. And then um, I just looked at your courses and I think um, based on just quickly looking at them, uh, some of your um, apprentices would be eligible when they're 18 to get the entry level child development permit. But how how do you help students move between early childhood, especially in TK classrooms and districts, and then becoming permitted to work in um, that classroom when they're 18? Honestly, we haven't crossed that bridge. Um, so no, to answer your direct question, none of our students are working in TK at this point. Um, they've been in mostly second and third and fourth grade classrooms. Again, this plane's flying, we're just getting it off the ground. So, um, but I would say that um, as long as the district has the support services for them, they can go into kindergarten. But with regard to the early care, um, it's the under 18 issue that um, I I'm not 100% up on all of the rules and regulations for all of that. So we haven't focused on that. Um, I have been working with Randy Wolf on mm -hmm. um, the um, ECE apprenticeship program with San Joaquin Delta College and helping to get some of our students into her program and getting them into summer um, care places for mm -hmm. early well. So, um, so, you know, with ECE, it's a matter of, obviously they can't be fingerprinted, they can't count in ratio, but there's nothing to prevent them from being there. Um, so and I, yeah, I've been working. That's a very good point. Yes, I forgot about that in ratio. See, that's not my wheelhouse. So, um, but we do have a great early care um, department here at our County Office of Education. Mm -hmm. And I have been having many conversations with him or starting to, to say, how can we bridge this? Because there's such a need for the employment in those areas, huge need. Absolutely. And with TK expanding, yeah. it's going to just keep growing. Um, another couple questions have to do with... Um, uh, so I think you just answered one of them that right now you're not um, 
supporting the student into getting their child development permit, but that is something you're looking at if they want to go in that direction. Um, and some of the courses obviously will count toward their permit. So it's just a matter of you know, bridging that. We had a questionnaire on where the courses are offered. Where is your RSI offered? On the college or on the high school or where is it in the community? It's through San Joaquin Delta Community College, but they're all online except for the last IT course. And, um, but all of the paraprofessional courses are online. Oh, so they're virtual courses. They're all virtual, but the farm management, assistant farm manager, those classes are going to be in person. It's a little hard to talk about measuring soil samples if you are doing that online. So um, we will bridge that when we get there and students are obviously gonna have to figure out how to get there and that's going to be part of the hiring process. Mm -hmm. And then um, related to online instruction for young people, um, what kinds of supports have you built in for students that might be struggling with um, either the content or the, you know, just they're not, their grades are not appropriate or what, what kinds of supports do you have for them? So that's where the high school counselors or somebody on the high school campus is key. And they have to really work with that um, student and they are committed to the committee. So they serve on the high school committee as well. And we have monthly meetings where we do check-ins and they're to do weekly check-ins with the students. And so that's the commitment that the liaison, we're calling them from the high school campus. Additionally, our, the CTE Dean of Workforce and um, Development at Delta College sits on our committee as well. And she's a tremendous liaison for many things where if our students aren't able to get into the classes or if a student is needing to figure out how to um, work with the teacher because they have an IEP, um, we're learning a lot about that. So those are the types of supports that, but there can always be more. And we're building those supports through another grant that we're working with, with a community-based organization right now. Mm -hmm. But I think that if we could get to the career-wise Colorado model and, and have career-wise type um, supports locally, that's what we need. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it really, there needs to be more check-ins with each one of these students. It's not me as much as I love teenagers and hanging out with them and doing all those check-ins because that's where my counselor at heart comes in. I can't do that. Um, it has to really be with the counselor at that student's campus. Mm -hmm. Or another person that actually goes through the experience with them. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what do you see your next steps being um, in terms of maybe bridging this TK preschool ish, this ECE to paraprofessional issue. What other next steps are you looking at in San Joaquin? So we're definitely doing that. And I'm working with our um, early child care um, program here at our County Office of Education. But our last CAI, the December CAI, we wrote for um, the hospitality industry for the Lodi Wine Grape mm -hmm. Growers Association. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know Lodi, but a lot of the wine is coming out of there. And so they need help. Um, I volunteered to taste um, as much of it as I possibly can. And um, they're going to get back to me on that one. But um, they need help in their um, tasting rooms with hospitality. So we're going to write those standards. And then I don't know whether many of you have heard of the Chef Ann organization, but um, it's scratch cooking in school districts. Hmm. And um it has nothing to do with anything in my wheelhouse. I can cook and I enjoy eating, but um, it's it goes back to my mantra, it's the right thing to do. And they're trying to get into school districts and teach scratch cooking as mm -hmm. opposed to heating and serving. Yeah. And I just fell in love with that concept. And why can't we take our high school students who are going through the CTE culinary arts program, teach them to cook in our own school cafeterias, how to really cook, Mm -hmm. and turn that into an, a high school apprenticeship program. So those are my personal goals for my next steps, but that doesn't preclude me from an employer saying, hey, can you write standards for X, Y, Z? Because we want to hire an apprentice. And I'll say, you bet, we'll do it. We gotcha. So. Well, both IT and scratch cooking, as well as this teacher aid pathway are all parts of grow your own for schools and school districts. So absolutely it makes sense. There's shortages in all those areas. Um, I think the last question has to do with, um, can you talk a little bit more about 
Tracy and their contract with the union and um, how you would advise colleges who are entering into apprenticeship agreements to be inclusive of their unions. Um, what? No, I, I, I can't, honestly, Kathleen, because I've not been inside that. So there's a lot of bargaining that takes place on there. And I, I've never been in those shoes. Mm -hmm. And so, but the person with whom I'm working in, Tracy, promised to share that with me once it's all done, because that's a side of this whole puzzle that I would love to understand a lot more. Mm -hmm. uh, for Lyndon, they have a letter, which I can share with everybody from their school unions. It says, basically, we support the high school apprenticeship program because mm -hmm. we can't hire our own. So mm -hmm. we're in support of it. They didn't have any issues with that. Um, and the same is with some of the other school districts. There's there's no issue because they are not, they've taken the same position that it would have been, tweaked it and made it for a high school student. Mm -hmm. So they're not replacing a, a union member. An adult position. Correct, right. So I don't wanna get, I'm just not able to talk intelligently about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's a bit of an unexplored area, but um, yeah, if anybody knows how to, you know, if there is a good answer for that, because every school union has their own negotiating bargaining, it's not universal across the board, right? So, but the best answer I can say is change the job description, and so you're not taking a job away from an adult, mm -hmm. or make sure it's a pathway to an adult job. Mm -hmm. Um, and can you describe any interface that you have currently with after school extended care um, jobs, organizations? I, I know in some areas, the county offices do operate the after school program. So what is your relationship with after school jobs for young people? So I've been working with um, Bill Fennessy with the California After School Resource Network. Yeah. And um, I know there's a bunch of money that just got dumped into that organization for after school care. And maybe not in that organization, but that's been in the really state. Yes. In the state. <laughs> ELOP. Yeah. I didn't mean to say he got it all, but uh um a lot of money. Um, and so just how can we make that a pathway for apprenticeship mm -hmm. programs? And um the ACEs, the after school safety grant mm -hmm. is one funding opportunity that school districts have been exploring the use of. Um to pay their apprentices. So that's really as much as I've gotten into after school type programs, because again, it's, it's very specific for these teacher aides. They're not just babysitting for lack of better words. So forgive me if that's what coming off wrong, because they can't, they have to be getting their on the job training in the specific work processes that's been approved. Well, hopefully in our region, we'll have some CAI grants approved and um, some will be expanding extended learning opportunities. So we'll see. I know um, hopefully we'll hear by April for July 1 startup. Um, yes. <laughs> hopefully. hopefully. Yeah, I know they delayed it. Um, are there any other questions from the group? Um, we have about five minutes if someone wants to just come off mute. I think I covered everything in the chat. If I miss something in the chat, let me know. Any other questions for Pam? And I just like to say that the three-year pathway for these students, if a student decides after they've completed their RSI courses, now they are a first-year community college student. Most of our students are taking full-time classes toward their AA degree. And then the goal is if they decide to continue for a bachelor's degree, great. If they decide to change and get a higher paying IT job, <laughs> which I know is out there, are out there, or if their goal is to stay working as a paraprofessional teacher's aide, continue their education, and then hopefully become a teacher. I think the trajectory for this is, is really in place. And um, Pam, I think it also points to the student support needed to make sure when we're talking to people at the ages of 16, 18, 19, 20, that we provide comprehensive information about graduation transfer and Absolutely. some of the career options. And that does get tricky for many right. colleges. It's real hard to, uh, you have a cohort identified, but you almost need one-on-one -on -one counseling and one-on-one -on -one advising um, based on their goals. So 
Agreed. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're at time. And um, any other last questions? We have two minutes. No. Well, thank you all very, very okay, much. Okay. Thank you so much, Pam. Um, I can't find my applause hands. So I'll just do it. <laughs> live but thank you so much for sharing um powerpoint and uh, pam's presentation will be on the website um this afternoon uh soon as soon as i get to it um and pam thank you do you want to put your um email in the chat in case anyone wants sure. to email you there we go thank you thank you so much all right everybody have a nice afternoon bye bye okay. Thank you. Bye. I'll, I'll stay on if anyone's got any questions. Hi, Christina. Hi, Tina. How are you? I'm good. good. I'm seeing you. I know I'm I just I you know what when I saw you I remembered and I sent you an invitation to Patty's um, retirement so oh we did talk like, about that next week so sorry okay. <laughs> but I sent it so you okay. I knew um, that yeah I remember talking about it okay yes, that's yes. right that was a couple weeks ago it's hi Tina how are you she's probably doing something else I do have a question Kathy so you're saying um so, you know, every model is different, every county, 